Hello, everyone. Welcome back to File Cloud's Q&A sessions. I'm joined by Jason Dover, our Chief Product Officer. How are you doing today, Jason? Pretty good. How's it going today, Katie? It's going well. I'm very awesome. excited about the topic we're covering today because we are diving into the next release. So, Jason, can you tell me what's going on with this latest release? What can we look forward to? Yeah, Katie, we're really excited about this specific uh, release that we're bringing out to market. So this is version 23.232 of, of File Cloud, and a lot of value has been packed into here that we believe is going to have a, a big impact for, for our customers. One of the first uh, key capabilities are uh, is a new feature around digital rights management protection, so making it easier for customers to ensure that they're protecting content that's sensitive from unauthorized reproduction. And that's something that we see come up quite a bit as we're we're working with customers in the market. Uh, another, we we recently had a chat like this where we talked about the importance of compliance uh, and how the market's being impacted around that. We've made a few improvements uh, and additions in terms of our own capabilities to help customers meet compliance standards. The third uh, kind of key element of, of this release is around uh, content classification, right? So one of the key things when you're thinking about a solution like this and, and how you protect your data that's in your ecosystem is first being able to classify what you actually have. And, and it's that information that you can then leverage to make decisions about how content is handled, what can be shared, not. And really this ultimately plays overarchingly into the cyber strategy that our customers have. That sounds really exciting. A lot of different powerful functionalities that are going to be coming out with this release. So I just wanted to touch back on one of the first uh, functionalities you mentioned, which was the digital rights management. How is this a new functionality in FileCloud compared to the pre-existing DRM that was already with FileCloud? Yeah, that's a good question, Katie. And I guess kind of taking a step back, why does this functionality exist in the first place, right? So you start with why people put file cloud into their ecosystem. They put file cloud into their ecosystem or subscribe to the, the cloud version of our service because they have a need for easy and simplified content collaboration on unstructured data. I have two parts of an existing organization uh, or perhaps two different agencies or organizations that need to share content, collaborate on it, iterate on it, et cetera. But I need to make sure that I'm doing that in a way that allows me to keep this, this kind of protection envelope wrapped around it, uh, comply with my governance requirements and control where that content actually is. So that's kind of step one. But you can go up a further step. While it may be okay for me to allow another entity, another organization, another person to access content, I may want to protect that from getting reproduced. I may want to protect it from getting copied. I may want to protect it from being screenshotted as an example. And, and, and ultimately our digital rights management protection capabilities uh, adds this extra layer of protection on top of the core functionality of file cloud. So we have, as you rightly noted, a set of capabilities that we call secure docs. Uh, this is a client-based method where you effectively create a secure container. Uh, there's a key exchange process that gets sent to your uh, recipient. Uh, then they're able to open it and access it, but it has those protection mechanisms that keeps the content from uh, being shared or reproduced in ways that are not authorized. Kind of similar if you went uh, in the U.S. through the, the secure messaging uh, model, if you were going for a loan or something like that you may have experienced that type of workflow. And for the most stringent uh, security uh, requirements that may be in place around protecting content, this is still something that's of, of use. There are some cases where the bar may be slightly lower, right? You, you don't need to go through all of the, the, the steps that are involved there with the key exchange and so forth, but you still wanna have an extra layer of control and security where you can prevent unauthorized file distribution or exposure. Uh, especially when dealing with sensitive IP. And that's really what these new capabilities are around. So we've effectively taken some of the essence of, of the original feature, but now allow you to do it with the uh, right-click, 
and share kind of workflow. So very similar to today, how you can take a, a document, a folder, you right click, you share, you then decide who has access to it. You have the exact same capabilities, but you're now able to make it a, a digital rights management protected link. One of the interesting things from a, a kind of underlying architecture perspective, it, it's effectively a streamed set of images, right? It is kind of how it works under the hood. So with that, the entire contents are never actually in possession by the recipient that you're you're sharing with. Uh, and this ultimately helps with, with protecting that content and, and, and mitigating the possibility of it being reproduced or shared uh, in ways that you haven't authorized. That's awesome. So digging a little bit more into the release, you mentioned content classification. Could you tell me more about some of the benefits that are offered with this new version of the content classification in FileCloud? Sure. As we mentioned, a big part of protecting your estate of, of content that you have in your ecosystem is knowing what you have, uh, having it classified, put into the right bucket, and then applying policies to that uh, that's consistent with the sensitivity and, and level of risk that's associated with it. Um, content classification, I would say, can be challenging sometimes, right? Getting the rules built out in the right way for the specific content sets that you have in your ecosystem. Sometimes it takes trial and error uh, to actually get that right. Um, what we've done with the content classification engine is, is built a no-code uh, editor that now allows you to build rules with a visual interface. So folks who are familiar with File Cloud, we will be familiar with the usage pattern because we have other things like this in the product as an example for our workflow automation. But we've basically taken that same pattern and now extended it to content classification rule building, which just makes it a lot easier, a lot more accessible for our customers to engage with it. That's, that's I would say, a theme of this release is how do we make uh, advanced and mature capabilities more accessible for our customers to help them to protect their environment and to comply with their information security policies and strategies. Another element of, of the new capabilities around content classification is, is being to, able to simulate the rules against a sample set of content. So I now build a rule with the great new visual builder uh, to look for Swedish licenses as an example. Well, now I can take a piece of content that has a sample Swedish license in it, uh, run the rule against that test piece of data to make sure that it's actually functioning before I roll it out into the production. So this now gives our, our customers greater sense of confidence that the system's actually working as expected uh, before they roll these rules out into their production ecosystem across a portion or their entire data set. Now, the third thing that we've done is also extended capabilities to uh, allow for AI-based content classification as well. So assuming that there are portions of the data set within the ecosystem where uh, the organization's uh, policies allow for this, administrators now can leverage OpenAI uh, to be used to classify content as well. And of course, there's a, a number of our customers that we, we find have this as a part of their strategy. How can they start to leverage AI uh, to help them to be more efficient and to help them to actually use it to create some advantage uh, within their environment as well as increase efficiency. And so with this, you now can also use natural language. So I can say, I want to search for and classify any content that has quote unquote bad words, right? And now you can use this to create a rule set that will go and find any content that has an example uh, profanity uh, within it. Um, We're going to continue to extend this to also support on-premises large language models as well. We know that not all customers are able to leverage technology sets such as OpenAI, but are still interested in bringing artificial intelligence as a part of their overall content management and cyber strategy. And so with that, we, we plan on iterating on this as well uh, so that customers who are looking to use uh, lang large language models that they're deploying on premises inside of their private cloud uh, will be extended as well uh, over the coming, the coming year. Well, that sounds 
really exciting having worked with our workflow builder before. I'm excited to see what the builder looks like with our content classification engine and certainly pulling in AI and other tools like a, a check to verify that the rule you've put in place will actually function the way you intend. That's just going to make life so much easier for so many people. So clear out your weekend. It's going to knock your socks off, Katie. Very excited for that. Speaking of making people's lives easier, you mentioned that we have some compliance updates with this recent release. Can you tell me more about it? Absolutely. You and I recently had a chance to have one of these chats about uh, compliance, its importance uh, for our customers. And so it's really a core part of our strategy, helping our customers uh, to be in line with the compliance standards that they're required to uh, is a core part of our value proposition and, and what we're all about. We don't make a claim that implementing File Cloud makes your whole environment now compliant with these standards, but we play a part in helping you uh, to meet that. So, so one of the features that we have in the product is something called Compliance Center. Uh, with this, it comes uh, pre-baked with a number of templates uh, that uh, correlate to common compliance standards. And what it basically does is it looks at your configuration inside of File Cloud, looks at how your access is set up to uh, data inside of the ecosystem, and it maps that against the articles of these various compliance standards. And it shows you where you need to make adjustments so that the essence of how you're configured is in line with the spirit of those standards. In this release in 23.232, we've added two new additional templates as a part of that stack. One is for NIST 800-171, uh, which is a standard that uh, organizations in the private sector, but who do work for uh, different government agencies has to be compliant with, if, especially if they uh, deal with uh, certain types of unclassified data, they have to show that they're meeting the standards uh, for protecting information systems. On the other hand, U.S. government agencies oftentimes have to comply with this standard uh, as well. And so this just makes it easier for you to get your uh, content access ecosystem set up in a way that's in line uh, with that compliance standard. The second template that we've added in is for Saudi Arabia PDPL. Uh, for personal data protection laws, uh, kind of similar to GDPR in the EU. Uh, if you have organizations that are, are doing business in that part of the world, uh, they're dealing with uh, the information of citizens of Saudi Arabia, uh, then there's a requirement uh, that, again, comes with stiff penalties for not meeting it uh, to comply with this set of standards to make sure that they're doing the right things in terms of how they're handling and protecting that potentially private citizen, uh, private data. And we have a number of customers that do fall into that category. Ultimately, as noted, continuing to help our customers meet the requirements that they have around privacy and compliance in all of the parts of the world that they do business in, uh, that's really a core part of our mission uh, as we progress our roadmap uh, to bring more value to our customers. So this is just the start and you can expect to see more similar advancements uh, as we go through the next uh, next 18 to 24 months. That is very exciting. I love to see the compliance center growing. Each new template is just very delightful. We get to I don't see think all I've ever the different heard it issues. All the so I'm happy to hear that, Katie. <laughs> I just love how organized it is. And it, it just feels like it will make life so much easier. It is a way of easing so many cybersecurity anxieties and compliance anxieties because it organizes all of our functionalities in line with these really critical regulations. So I'm a big fan. <laughs> Awesome. Happy to hear that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jason, and for giving us a lovely little snapshot of the file cloud release 23.232. And we are really looking forward to all of these new and improved functionalities. Thanks a lot, Katie. Always fun to chat and I look forward to next time. All right. I hope you join us for that future episode of our Q&A session, and we will see you all next time. See you later.